Hi guys, it's Adam and welcome to the third instalment of the Sell Selling with Sanity Reselling Mental Health Podcast. Seems like a little, little bit of a mouthful that, so I'm going to have to shorten that for next week, I think. Uh, quite a lot um, of information to say all at the start of the video there. So I think I'll just start saying Selling with Sanity Podcast, that's probably a bit easier. Um, so yeah, to, without further ado, we shall get on with it today. So um, the, the topic today is should you structure your business around your mental health issues? Now I know that's quite a broad uh, topic or subject, so I'm not going to go into the real nitty gritty of every little uh, thing you do in your reselling business and thinking about should you structure it in this way. I'm just going to give a general sort of my opinion on it, um, what I feel um, has helped me in the past, what I feel has hindered me, all that sort of stuff. But with, without um, further ado, we'll just get on with looking at a comment before we actually get on to the topic at hand. So Andy Robinson commented on the actual first reselling podcast I did. Um, I thought it was the second one, but it wasn't. It was actually the first one. Um, and there's one little quote from his comment I do want to read out, and that is, what a few years ago felt unobtainable now feels achievable. And that is essentially where I'm at. Obviously, uh, he reveals in the comment that um, he's been suffering for tw over 20 years, or he says, I'm still learning after 20 years of illness. So he's been obviously suffering with mental health issues for a while, um, and for, for a very long time actually, almost my lifetime, uh, to be quite factual there. Um, but it, he, he, he was in a place that, were, that felt that he felt things were unattainable. So the things that he thought um, he... Basically, I, I get this feeling. It's quite hard to explain, actually. Basically, something to someone without mental health illness may think something is achievable or obtainable very easy, you know, very easily. It, it, it might be something like um, an everyday task. It might be exercise. It might be something like that. But to someone who's suffering with a mental health illness... To them, even though they kind of understand it might be an easy thing to do, um, like something like, you know, as I say, exercise or going out, for, for me personally, going out for a meal with family or, you know, going for a, a long extended car journey, something like that. Um, although I know it's, um, you know, not necessarily really hard or anything like that, it still feels unattainable. Um, but what I think the big thing is, is getting into a mindset where you can now feel it is achievable. And it seems like that's what Andy's done over the years he's been battling with, with mental health illness. So I think that that is a really nice comment to actually read out because for me at the moment, I'm in the unattainable camp or I feel as if I'm in that unattainable camp where I feel that certain things, even no matter how small or how big, they feel unattainable to me. Um, and it's nice to know that someone who's been suffering for such a long time now feels that he can he can actually achieve things that he once felt were unattainable. It gives me hope, and hopefully it gives other people watching this hope and understanding that this can be managed, this can be accepted, and we can get through um, the, you know, these issues that most of us share. So... Yeah, it was, it was quite a nice comment, and that, that little part of it, that what a few years ago felt unattainable now feels achievable, that little section really did stick with me, and it and it was a lovely comment. And to be honest, since I've started this podcast, I've had so many lovely comments, people offering advice, people just um, saying, you know, how um, great it, it's been to hear me be honest and open on this subject, so I'm really thankful of the advice I've gotten. So, without further ado... We shall get on to the topic at hand. So I couldn't really find a, a picture that I liked, but then I thought, you know what, this one will do. Quite like this uh, picture, actually. So should you structure your business around your mental health issues? Well, it's it's a funny one, this. I suppose a lot of people would say no, um, including myself, really. But there's also got to be um, a sense of emotion there. So, for example... Yes, maybe you shouldn't structure your business around your mental health issues. It's something that I've done in the past. It's something that I do now. Um, what I mean by this is, for example, in my case, um, 
I don't go to a physical auction when it's on, I bid online because I feel that if I went to an auction I'd get a panic attack or something like that. So I am essentially directly structuring my business around my anxiety there. However, I can still get the job done, you know, I've found a way around it. But is that really right? Because if I'm doing this, if I am structuring my business around my anxiety like that, Will I ever really accept my anxiety? Will I ever really be able to get to a place where, uh, or, or the, the place I want to be with my mental health? Um, and to me personally, the answer is probably no, um, which is quite nice because I'm a I'm a guy who likes black and white. I don't like I don't like these grey areas. So uh, you know I like science because a lot of things in science are black and white. Um, and personally, to me structuring your business around your mental health issues is not a good idea and I know I'm a hypocrite for saying that because I structure my business around my mental health issues but that is because of the uh, basically how hard it is to cope with mental health and this is what I was saying a minute ago about emotion has to come into this so obviously we're all human we all feel emotion and when you feel pain with anxiety, with depression, whatever it may be, um, it's, you, you can never think to yourself, um, I'm going to just do that again, I'm going to try again, I'm going to try again. Especially when repeatedly you try something and you constantly feel pain from it and it, it just feels like you're getting nowhere, you're just going around in a circle and every time you do it, people are saying, go on, try it, try it, try it and you're thinking in your mind, well, What's the point? I've done it so many times and it it just gives me pain. I have a panic attack, I feel anxious, I get depressed, whatever it be. Um and it makes me you know, it makes me think, right, I just wanna go back into a comfort zone. But the way I think that I'm now looking at this is um yes it may give me pain, yes it may um you know, it may do this, and this is the this is the key thing as well. It may, it 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 ne might not give you pain. It's only yourself who's blowing that up in a lot of circumstances. So what I've learned is, when I have a positive approach to doing something, then my anxiety will subside less than if I go into it with a negative approach because I'm already thinking, oh well, I'm going to blow this up and I'm going to get anxious over this because. It's something that I just know I'm going to get anxious over. But the fact is, I don't have to do that. And you don't have to do that either. You don't have to blow that up. So if if we look at the emotion side of this, it is sometimes worth structuring your business around your mental health issue in certain circumstances. In the circumstance where maybe you have just tried something that... Um, you know, that's been very, very anxious for you, maybe on a temporary basis, you structure your business around your anxiety for a short period of time um, after you've been, you know, you've, you've been in an anxious situation and you've felt quite a lot of pain from that. It might be worth just structuring your business around um, your anxiety for a short time to make you, to help yourself reset because if you keep going, it's all well and good that uh, people who will say, you know, this sort of ex overexposure method of keep pushing yourself into the same situation and keep doing it and keep doing it and after a while, it, you'll, you'll get better at it and you'll be fine with it. I, I believe that. I believe that that is true. However, on an emotional level, if you've got someone who is anxious and they're constantly feeling pain, you've got to be sympathetic to them and you've got to realise that um, they're not going to want to keep pushing and keep pushing and keep pushing. And the more you force them to push, um, and the more anxiety they feel, um, at one stage of a the process, they're probably going to quit because they won't want to handle the pain anymore. And then they're going to recede back even further, and they're not going to get much out of that experience. However, if you do it in baby steps, if you pace yourself, and and maybe you do have a bad experience, then if you step back a little bit, structure your business in a different way so you can still get the job done for a temporary time period and then think to yourself, and when I say this as a temporary time period, really I mean a day, 
a week at maximum because what you will find if you structure your business around your anxiety and keep doing that after three or four weeks maybe not even that you're going to get into a nice little comfortable habit of well I can just do it this way and I can live with my anxiety and it's fine it'll it'll, it'll be cool but the fact is you're you're only tricking yourself then you're being the devil's advocate you're you're just saying to your anxiety right we're just gonna do it this way and I'm gonna live with you it's fine it'll be okay um but the fact is it won't be because when you get to your old age you regret what you the chance you didn't take so the best thing is for me personally is if you try you know you you go forward you try to do something if you get to that breaking point of this is really painful you've had an anxiety attack you know panic attack you've been depressed in that situation or whatever it is whatever the um, illness or the mental illness you you suffer with is it gets to that breaking point for me personally I would temporarily step back and then move in uh, move forward as quickly as you can from having stepped back um, for me personally I've um, stepped back too much in a lot of things and I continue to step back too much in a lot of things and what that means for me is it becomes ever harder to do these things and I'm going to give you a, a very good strong example of what I mean by this as well as obviously the example I gave with the auction house so when I about six to eight months ago I started going out in the car more and I'd go further and further afield sometimes I'd go on my own sometimes sometimes my parents or my mum would be with me um, but generally I would go further and further afield and after a few times of doing that I became more and more comfortable in the car but then I stopped doing it for a little bit maybe not even because I was experiencing anxiety with that actually maybe I was feeling quite good about going in the car but maybe I didn't have the time to do it or you know I didn't have the time to go to these places or maybe it was just the fact that actually I'm quite comfortable around my local area again and you slip back into that comfort zone and then what happens is when you try to go to those places that you may have been alright going to after building up some sort of resistance, let's say, to the anxiety in the car or wherever it may be, um, when you actually draw back for a long period of time and then try it again, you go back to square one, in, in my opinion, and essentially you have to push further. So, generally, structuring your business around your anxiety there's going to be a point where you're going to have to break that structure and you're going to have to go out of your comfort zone at some point anyway. So it's probably just best to try as best you can to break that structure in little bits, in structured ways, break the structure in structured ways. That just sounds very weird there, but I'm hoping, hoping you know what I, uh, you understand what I mean. But you break that structure in small ways um, over, you know, in maybe what you feel is a controlled environment um, and you slowly do that um, for whatever this activity is, whether it's going to an auction, whether it's going further afield in the car, whether it is doing whatever, whether it's exercise or whatever it is, slowly, um, you know, slowly do these things, build them up and try not to stop them um, because if you stop them, it, for me, it's it's not been good. Whenever I've stopped these things um, and, and not done them anymore, maybe just doing things, and, and this this leads on to a whole other debate of commitment. Um, you know, if you commit to doing something like, uh, for example, a lot of anxious people uh, or maybe even depressed people wouldn't like to sign up to something like a class because if you sign up to a class that's eight weeks long you're going to feel the pressure that you have to go to all eight classes and that you have to do this and if you don't do one of those classes you've failed and then you just recede back again um but trying to maybe do something on a structured weekly basis like that that maybe isn't so black and white as yeah, you know, a, 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 an evening class or something like that that you feel you have to do, but something that you just structure yourself and you say, look, every Wednesday night I'm going to try my best to go swimming or I'm going to try my best to do this, um, then essentially you've structured it, um, not necessarily around your business, we've moved away from that slightly here and I'll get back onto that, but you've structured it 
by yourself, you paced yourself, and I think that in that respect, even if you didn't do it one day, you know, one week out of the however many weeks you're going to do it for, or whether you're going to do it till, till the end of your life or whatever, but however many weeks you're going to do it for, you think to yourself, if you don't go one one week, I don't think it would feel as bad or as much of you failed as if you had a structured class that someone was teaching because then what you're doing is you're thinking in your mind that person who's running that class is expecting me here um, and obviously that's the stage that we all want to get to with our mental health we want to be able to just say right I'm going to do this and I'm going to be able to do this for the next 12, 18 weeks and I'm going to do this class or I'm going to uh, go to the auctions for the next four months or whatever. But we, we at the moment, for me personally and maybe for you who are watching, the place that I'm in, it's a little bit further away um, than actually being able to do that or feeling that I am, am not able to do that. So, you know... At the moment, I have to think of ways around that, but that I can still actually um, continue with my, um, basically, healing of my anxiety. So, essentially, getting back to sort of business and structuring, uh, getting back to the kind of the question at hand, in terms of should you structure your business around your mental health issues, on the whole, I would say no. I would say, particularly, no, don't do it. Try your best to... Keep finding new ways to push out of your comfort zone a little bit. But in the, on another side of it, um, I do feel that there is a place for structuring your business around your mental health issue. If things get too hard, you do need, like anyone, whether you've got a mental health issue or not, everyone, if, if something gets too hard for someone in who's working a job or who is self-employed, Someone get if, if something gets too hard for someone, they naturally want a little bit of a break. They want to recharge their batteries. That's just what we want as humans, and that's perfectly fine. That's what we should do. We need that time to recharge. So if things are getting too hard when you're pushing, I do feel that um, you then temporarily, as I mentioned, need to uh, step back and maybe just for a short period of time recharge your batteries and then... Uh, dive into it head first so with that being said what can I do and what can you guys do um, and what can you identify um, to be able to actually not structure your business around your anxiety anymore around your depression maybe um, you know as for me again one big one for me would be try in baby steps to go to auctions or maybe try and go further afield in the car to the charity shops and the car boots and all the, this sort of stuff so Taking that as it is, in small steps, there's no pressure on you to perform or anything like that, you then think to yourself, well, why don't I give it a shot? And automatically, well, not necessarily automatically, but sometimes I feel quite positive about doing these things because once you've said to yourself, well, I'm not putting any pressure on myself, and once you start to understand, and it's a slow process and I'm still coming to terms with it, starting to understand that no one else is going to put pressure on you from doing these things, once you start to realise that it's only you who would like to do these things for the benefit of yourself, then you start to feel more contented with yourself and you start to think, well, hang on a minute, yeah, I actually feel more positive about taking this step and here's a really funny thing when you start to feel more positive about taking that step just by thinking about it just by taking that pressure off and just by thinking why right, I don't have to do this I don't even have to do anything in uh, the physical sense I just need to think about it I just need to talk about it myself even if I don't want to do it I don't have to but just by that talking of it more frequently saying you know what, maybe I, I should go swimming next week or maybe I should go to the car boot next week if maybe car boots are, uh, are, 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 can't even speak, are an anxiety for you. So for me personally, I can go to car boots, but for you, maybe it's uh, hard to go to a car boot or a charity shop. So maybe just thinking about it a little bit more um, and not necessarily pressuring yourself with an action over time because you're thinking about it. A lot more you may think actually this I, I feel like I can do this I feel like you know I feel positive enough to give this a little bit of a go 
And that is a very crucial point because when you think positively like that, you're in the early stages of that being able to do it and that positivity. Uh, I apologise as well if you can hear the phone going off in the background. Um, I don't want to go down and switch it off or anything. It takes forever to uh, ring out though, so I apologise if you can hear it for a while. Um, I don't know why we've got this phone. It's so... it takes... oh, there we go. It's gone. Anyway, so... At that crucial point, when you're feeling just about positive enough to give things a go, for me personally, in my opinion, that is not the time you want to practice uh, something like overexposure, where you just jump in and do everything all at once. In my personal opinion, once you've got that shred of positivity, that will help you get something done. That will help you um, enhance your life and move on and try the thing, the one thing that you think, right, I'll give this a go. The one thing that you are, you have that shred of positivity for. But it's important, in my, again, this is just in my opinion, but it's important to slow down and think, right, well, I've got this positivity for this thing. Now, I've not got any pressure for myself. I'm not putting any pressure on myself. I'm going to, and, and maybe even just saying that to yourself, look, I'm not pu putting any pressure on myself to do this. No one around me is putting pressure on me to do this. And it's always good to, if you have that positivity, maybe not tell anyone that you're going to try this. Because what people will say to you is, oh, yeah, that'd be great. Yeah, we could do this. We could do that. We could do the other. And that will make you feel fear. And you'll be thinking, well, oh, now I've got to, now I've got to basically, I've got to be held by these standards of this person because they want me to do this with them and this with them. But if you keep it in your own mind and you think, right, I'm just going to slowly do this and I feel positive about doing this and I'm going to slowly adjust myself to the idea of doing this and then taking that first small little action of maybe just driving to that location or maybe driving to the location and just going into the place where it is you are going to do this thing or maybe it's not a place but uh, maybe just something that you're doing at home slowly think to yourself right let's do this in steps I'm feeling positive right now, I, I'm feeling happy about this, so that's a great start, but let me not get ahead of myself, let me not put too much pressure on myself by going all in at once, let's just say, for example, a great example for me is going swimming. I felt over the last two weeks a little bit more positive about going swimming. I feel like it's not as unattainable as it was a few months ago. So how can I make it so that then I feel more comfortable about going swimming? Well, I can simply talk about it more. Like every day, every week, I can talk about it more with myself. I think maybe I should, maybe I, I could do that. Maybe it's something that actually I would find enjoyable because I know that before my anxiety, swimming was massive. Obviously, my, uh, uh, what is it, astrology sign or star sign or whatever it is, is Aquarius, the water carrier. So, obviously, I do love water. It's something I absolutely love. Um, and, you know, before my anxiety, I loved swimming. So, I've got to think in my mind, well, I loved swimming. It was one of my favourite activities to do in terms of exercise. So, basically, what I can do to get back to that feeling is drive to the swim baths and maybe just look I mean most swimming baths have that little gallery where you can look through the windows and you know watch people swimming in the pool or whatever um, and basically you could just literally look at the water you could literally sit in that gallery and look at the water and you know the water splashing about um, with obviously people in the pool who are having fun and stuff just watch that for a little bit that's the first step doesn't have to be any pressure on that first visit to go into that pool you just look at that you look at the water you think right what's what's bad about this what's uncomfortable about this nothing and once you understand that now sometimes your mind might have the tendency when you say something like that to think uh, to actually try and find something that's uncomfortable so sometimes it might not be the best idea to say something like that but if you truly believe in in your mind and if you can feel that actually no there isn't anything uncomfortable here for me then you can actually think to yourself well actually I'm in control here and it feels like I can do this activity so when you're now in that place once you've just been down there 
you can then think to yourself, right, you know what, I might go home now, and I might try another day, or you can go on and you can think, right, I'll take the next step. Now, for me personally, I would, I'm the type of person who would want to take the next step, but sometimes that's not always the best solution. Sometimes actually going home, having a night's sleep, and then coming back, and then the next step might be paying your money and simply getting changed into your swimming costume, and then maybe you go under the shower. You don't go into the pool, but you maybe go into the shower if you are comfortable taking that next step. But you can see what my mind is doing right now. Because of the way my mind works, it wants to get in that pool. The only thing I want to do is, I'm thinking to myself, I want to get in that pool because I want to beat my anxiety completely. I know that getting in that pool beat my anxiety. But in actual fact, if I go that far, if I jump in that pool, if I do that, then I might get ahead of myself a little bit much, and then I might think to myself, oh, hang on, I've, I've gone too far here. Actually, I can feel myself getting anxious. And the reason that is, is it's because you don't feel comfortable. You don't feel in that zone of being comfortable. Taking it in these little baby steps makes your comfort zone expand slowly. So what we're doing here is we're actually making something that was uncomfortable a comfortable activity for you to do, but slowly in, in little baby steps. So basically you could then think, right, I've got my swimming costume on, I feel good, now I think to myself, right, I'm going in the shower today, right? And you might think, right, I'll go in that shower. And then you might feel a little bit of pressure because you paid your money. And this is a pressure for me. You've paid your money when you've gone into the swimming bath. So you think, well, I've paid my money. I don't want to waste that money. I've got to get in the pool. And that's that's a pressure for me. The fa money is a massive pressure for me with my anxiety. Financial pressure, massive, massive factor for me. Um, so automatically my brain goes, well, I paid my money. I can't leave now. Um, but I think the best option for me personally, and maybe for you guys, I don't know, would be to get in that shower, feel the water on your skin, feel comfortable in that changing rooms, and then maybe back away. Not because you've quit or anything like that, but actually with the feeling of, I've actually gone in, I've got changed, I've gone in the shower, I'm feeling comfortable, I'm feeling happy, I'm leaving it at that because I'm now, I'm comfortable at getting changed, and I'm comfortable at going in the shower in the swimming bath. So that's something I've achieved. I've actually achieved feeling comfortable in that setting. Then the next time you go back, you may think, right, I'll dip my foot in the pool. I'll, I'll do the. I'll go through the steps that I did last time. I'll go in the gallery first. Then I'll pay my money. Then I'll get changed. Then I'll go for a shower. I'm happy now. I'm good. I've done those in the past. I've felt happy there. Now I'm gonna dip my foot in the pool, and so on and so on until you are in the pool and you you end up swimming. And before you know it, you may, you may actually be swimming a few lengths after a few weeks of, of building up to this. And and then slowly but surely, your anxiety with doing that activity reduces. Now, obviously, it's it's such a hard thing to to do that. It's such a it's so such a powerful thing, it's such a hard thing to actually do that. But if you can do that, whether it, I know I've given, I've veered off a little bit to more lifestyle there and lifestyle activities, but the same applies for if you're in your business. Just doing these little steps, identifying the little steps first off, and then doing them slowly. I could do the exact same thing to go into an auction. I could do the exact same thing to go in around someone's house to pick up some stock or something like that. It's exactly the same process, but I do feel that that is a great way to go about it. And I do feel that in terms of should you structure your business around your mental health issue, we're going to close up on that now. But I do feel, in my opinion, that you should and you shouldn't. There are times that it needs to happen uh, for your own personal recharge or mental well-being. You need that time to feel more in your comfort zone and recharge yourself and then there are times where you shouldn't because it will actually, one, both hinder your recovery as uh, someone with a mental health issue or hinder your growth with your mental health. Um, and it will also hinder your business growth because you, you'll be able to do so much more if you slowly build up and work up to, to doing these different things. 
um, within your business. So I think there's, there's two sides to that, um, and it's something that isn't necessarily black and white. It's something that is a little bit of a grey area, but I think, you know, I can kind of accept that, even though, as I mentioned, I don't know, what I think I did mention at the start that I am kind of someone who doesn't like the black and white, uh, sorry, who doesn't like the grey area. I like black things that are black and white, um, and I kind of, it's hard for me to accept, you know, these grey areas, but I think that that is the truth. I think, you know, for me, in my mind, that's what I feel is the truth. It, it's it's both good and it's both bad to, to do that. But anyway, we're going to move on to Quote Corner now. Um, I don't think I've got any questions uh, this time, so I think I'll leave the questions this week. Um, if you have got any questions, as always, I'll just quickly flip on to that, actually. Do that now. If you have got any questions, then please do drop them down below. Anything uh, you're suffering with, you can share coping strategies. I've had quite a few um, suggestions for coping strategies on the podcast so far, and I'm really glad that people are uh, mentioning them, because if I can get them out on this podcast, um, then that is brilliant. Obviously, that might help someone. As I mentioned, any questions or coping strategies, you do not have to give your name or if you have given your name in a YouTube comment, uh, if you would like to remain anonymous, uh, then I will, I'll let you remain anonymous, although I was just thinking then, if you've actually commented with your username, you'll probably not want to be be anonymous anyway but if you direct message me or something if that's your method of communication of choice um then you know and you don't want to you know your name being said or anything then i'm quite happy to uh leave you anonymous um but yeah if you've got any questions any queries any coping strategies or anything please leave them down below now um, and obviously that may help someone in the future. It can be to do with obviously reselling, mental health, that sort of stuff. Um, and any of your experiences. If you've got any sh stories you'd like to share of your own mental health, then please again put them down below in the comments section. Or if you would like to remain anon not anonymous, you can message me through Facebook or Instagram. So we will move back on to the quote corner. So today is a very, very simple quote. But it's something that um, is quite uh, it's quite relatable to the topic at hand, actually. So don't believe everything you think. So obviously we talked about um, in today's episode a lot about how we can blow things up. Uh, you know, as people suffering with mental health illness, we can blow things up inside our own minds and we put more pressure on ourselves to perform. And it's not about, you know, don't believe everything you think. It's not necessarily about... Um, this, you know, you don't have to believe these things that you're being told or being, or, or these thoughts that are coming up because it is very much like anxiety or depression. It's very much like you've got someone else in your head with you. Um, it's kind of as if you've got this person saying, no, you can't do this, you can't do that. If you do this, something bad will happen. If if you do this, you're, you're going to end up um, this horrible mess or this blubbering mess or whatever there's all these diff you know there's this person if you like um and i don't know whether it's right to actually uh, personify anxiety or depression or anything i'm not too sure on that to my uh, to be honest myself but um certainly it is like there's this other person in your mind and um it's sometimes worth just centering yourself in the moments that you somewhat hear this voice of oh no you can't do this it's sometimes worth centering yourself and thinking, well, actually, is it me who is saying that? Is it really, do I really want to not do this thing? Or, or actually, is there a, a good, strong desire in me to do this thing, but it's just the fear that is putting me off? And sometimes it's worth trying to identify what is fear and what is your own um, sort of excitement for doing this thing because sometimes your fear can override your excitement of doing something and if you let that happen then obviously you may uh, struggle in the longer term and also the shorter term so it's sometimes about in, uh, identifying the fear and the excitement and trying to choose the excitement over the fear and, and doing something because you pass passionately want to do it and not letting that little bit of fear of what might happen, what could happen, 
dictate what you do because at the end of the day it is exactly that it's what might happen or what could happen and I understand completely but people may be saying to me well I know I'm going to get a panic attack in a situation and I understand that because I've been there I, I in certain situations I'm still there I still think well I know I'm going to get a panic attack in this situation but actually if we're being honest you don't know whether you're going to get a panic attack in a situation. You've made a judgment of, I'm going to make, I'm going to get a panic attack in this situation. Whereas, if you think to yourself, and again, this relates to depression, or you may think to yourself, well, I'm going to get depressed in this situation, or, or you feel as if you are in your mind. But if you think to yourself, well, actually, let's try and renounce that negativity a little bit, and think about really what's happening and think to myself, well, why should that happen? And you, and then you start to think to yourself, well, really, there's not much rationality to why that should happen except your own negativity on the situation. Maybe that's negativity, uh, that, maybe that's fear. Sorry, maybe that's negativity that is masked as fear or fear masters negativity. I can't quite understand which way around that would go, but um, maybe that's the case. So just essentially straighten your mind out and think to yourself, no, I'm going to do this because I want to do it. I need to do this. It's something that I absolutely love and I'm not going to let that fear take control of me. I'm going to go into this with a positive mindset because it is something I want to do and I'm not going to feel like that because I, I feel happy and comfortable in what I'm doing. So I think that sometimes this kind of... Uh, sort of different person that comes into your mind can sometimes lead you astray a little bit and it might be best to try the best you can and I understand completely how hard this is and it's so hard for me to say it but try and let that go and try and focus on the thing that you want to do the person that you are and not the anxiety that's trying to fill you with fear and and what is in most circumstances unnecessary fear if you go skydiving if you're walking up mountains or something there is natural fear there and that is not wrong but if you're going to do something that is fairly simplistic to a lot of people then there doesn't need to be this level of fear here that we implant ourselves or that pops up in our mind and feels as if we're not implanting it there. So we just need to think to ourselves, right, let's distinguish on what we want to do and let's distinguish this fear and let's try and think, well, actually, there's no need for this fear to be here and let's look positively into the future and think, I'm going to give this a go, I'm going to do it in the way that I want to do it, I'm going to do it as slow or as fast as I want to do it, not anybody else, I'm not going to put any pressure on myself, but I'm going to do it uh, because I want to do it and I'm going to do it in the way I want to do it and that's the best thing to do really in my opinion and, and try and renounce that fear as best you can because when you go into that situation, you're going to be in a much better mental state than if you are blowing it up and blowing it up and blowing it up um, and, and becoming this person who is very, very fearful. Because we've all got to try and slowly work our way out of that. And I'm not saying it's a fast process. It is a very, very slow process. But with that being said, I can see that I'm starting to ramble now probably been rambling for half a video so I apologize if I have um but yeah so I will leave it there guys thank you very much for watching this podcast uh, watching this podcast listening to this podcast well I suppose you could be watching it if you're watching the little pictures go by a little bit um but yeah thank you very much for listening to this podcast the next one will of course be next week um I've not got a topic suggested suggested yet so if you would like to put a comment down below anytime during the week up until about Wednesday or Thursday, because I normally record it sort of Thursday, Friday of a podcast. So up until about Wednesday, Thursday, um, if you are watching this, then please do drop a comment down below um, with any suggestions you have for a topic for next week. Um, but yeah, I'm sure I'll be able to come up with one anyway. So uh, yeah, I'll leave it there, guys. Thank you very much for watching, and I will see you in the next video. So I'll see you very soon, guys.